Welcome to Tinkering with Terrius. Thank you for joining me for my Proster MS8233D digital multimeter unboxing. The box is pretty standard packaging wise. The front shows the symbols for the functions. The image they used on the front of the box and the bottom of the box are not actually images of the meter from inside. I'd hazard a guess that it's probably the image of the non-auto-ranging meter. On the back here you can see that it conforms to IEC 61010-1 and CAT 3 600 volt. It was a pleasant surprise as their Amazon listing had conflicting information about that. Here we have the meter, all nicely wrapped in plastic, as you can see, not the same as the images. The little manual. Generic battery. And finally, the probes. So the meter itself is quite heavy has a nice heft to it that makes it feel sturdy in the hands, which I later found out was mostly due to the yellow rubber casing on the outside. On the back here you can see that it has a 250 milliamp 250 volt fuse and a 10 amp 250 volt fuse. Now I assumed that the only way to remove the rear cover was the screw that was on the back. It was a brand new meter though, so I didn't want to uh, mess around with it without checking the manual first. So here we have the manual. As you can see on the last couple pages here, page 14 and page 15 is the only reference to the battery in the entire manual. It doesn't mention installing the battery for the first time, but I think it's fairly safe to assume that it is fully transferable. So disconnect and remove all test probes from any live source and meter. Open the battery cover on the bottom case by screwdriver. So it's pretty easy. It's just the one screw that holds on the back cover there. Back has a little piece of foam there to hold the battery so it doesn't wiggle around. I wish there was a little bit more room here for the leads, kind of squish right up against the case there. For the initial test here, I threw in the generic battery. Generally, I try to stay away from generic batteries if I can. After the video here, I threw in a Duracell. screw they used is very fine threaded so it takes a substantial amount of time to actually do up the little thing again
So I have a double A, a diode, and a resistor here. text battery sees at 1.624 volts. It's actually quite quick about the auto ranging there. It does display overload for a very split second there and that's just because it hasn't chosen a high enough range yet. So we got a 9 volt battery here as well. And 9.75. So we change it to ohms now. I'm going to test the resistor. This resistor is a 82.5 ohm resistor. resistor I have for a LED project I'm working on. It's a little bit slower in auto ranging for resistors but 83 it's pretty close to the rating. Change it to the diode setting. This is just a scrap diode that I got out of something at some point. You can see it's showing. Except for right there, that was just, it slipped off the probe a little bit. Couldn't make a good contact with it. So the diode test is working perfectly fine. Finally here, switch it to the continuity tester, and it beeps like it should. So all in all, it's a nice little sub $30 meter. Definitely a good beginner meter. The only thing I would advise is make sure you buy a couple extra fuses for it. If you have any comments, feel free to put them down below. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Next episode will be how to replace a fuse in your Proster MS8233D digital multimeter. <laughs>